and this is my first one. I hadn't didn't see one last time. I'm not sure why. They're not uncommon here. But that is a Grant's gazelle. What's really nice is there's some Thompson's gazelles behind those, not the zebra, obviously. But the smaller ones, and you can see very nicely the difference between the Grant's and the Thompson's gazelle. The Tommies are much smaller, and the Grant's, well, they've got much bigger horns and the more snubby noses. They look almost like a sort of mixture between an impala and a gazelle. That zebra is not doing itself any favours. If you're on television, you might want to perk your ears up slightly. You look a bit like a donkey. Three species in, well, half a frame, really. And there you can see the light has changed completely. Now it's getting to that pretty harsh white light. Now, all of these Thompson's gazelles I did not see, but I suspect that that cheetah from his vantage point will spot them eventually. And he may well come wandering down here at some stage to see if he can't catch himself some breakfast. There's just life everywhere you look here. There's a much quieter chorus of birds at the moment because I think it's got a bit hotter. <laughs> Senzo? <laughs> Can you look straight, straight through there? Just over the top of my finger and see if you can see what I'm looking at. It's miles away, yeah. If you look at that, if you look straight through that gap in the bushes that you've got there. No, not that. Now peel to the right slightly. Just slowly pan to the right. In between there. Somewhere around there. Keep going right. A little bit more. Yeah, where that car is. Now, just a little bit further to the right. There. Now, just zoom in there. Oh, I can't see it anymore. I mean, there's lots of stuff there, but there's an ostrich. Oh, there it is. Keep going right. Keep going right. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going there. That black dot is an ostrich at about ooh, two kilometers. <laughs> that is the amazing thing about this place. You can see things two kilometers away. That's astounding. Sorry, we had a question and I've missed it. I'm afraid. Can we have it again? Ah, Emily, you said any two zebras have the same stripe pattern. Emily, no. They don't, and it would be astounding if they did. And what's interesting, I mean, much like, I mean, I think there have been the odd zebra twin born, or the odd pair of twins born. Most likely they were not uh, monozygotic, but diazy so, um, what do you call them? They're not monozygotic, they are fraternal. In other words, they came from two eggs, and so, no, their stripes are not the same. It would be outlandish. If you were to find two zebras with the same stripes in the same way that it would be outlandish to find two human beings with the same stripe, um, same fingerprints, not stripes, we're not striped animals. But the, I mean, and the likelihood of that is so low that not even identical twins have the same fingerprints. So, you know, the oft quoted line about zebra, uh, far too oft quoted as far as I'm concerned, is that no two zebra have got the same stripe pattern. Well, that is absolutely true, but it's not particularly remarkable at all. You try and think of one organism anywhere that has exactly the same markings as the others of its species, and I think that you will have some difficulty, um, you know, I suspect even if you looked at something like, uh, I don't know, uh, two dung beetles of the same species, I think you'd find some individuality. But certainly with something as large as a zebra, no. Even with impala, I mean, I know they look almost identical, 
you'll find that there are definitely differences in their pelages. Now, Kathy, you want to know if a Thompson's gazelle is bigger than a diker. I'm going to say a Thompson's gazelle is about 10% larger than a diker, and then I'm going to consult this book that I have and tell you that a Thompson's gazelle apparently has a mass yeah, of about 25 kilograms. Male? Well, you know, 20 to 35. I mean, that's quite a wide range, so let's just say 27. And a big diker will weigh about 20 kilograms. A big common diker, that is, of course. Let me just check that that is true. I'm pretty sure it's true. There are many, many diker species. We, of course, only get the one juma. Where is the common diker? Hang on a second. Wild one. Bush diker is what they call it. Yeah. It's exactly, I was almost exactly right, except that the female, of course, is bigger in the diker than the male. I'd forgotten that. And the Thompson's gazelle is the other way around. I'll tell you that I don't think the cheetah has emerged from the bushes, so I think we'll carry on from our current position and see what else we can find across the plains of East Africa. And if you are wondering, of course, when everyone, any, whenever anyone talks about East Africa, one must talk about out of Africa. And as far as I'm aware, much of that film was shot right here. And certainly our camp, uh, just near Angama Mara, or it has that very last iconic scene of the lion and sitting on the, sorry, one second here. Uh, the, that iconic scene of the lion sitting on the grave site is just in front of one of the rooms at Angama. Sorry, I'm, Kirsten, I'm afraid I missed that in its entirety. I got entirely onto another subject. Ah, Jeffrey in Texas, you say we need to play the game Spot the Animal from a Billion Miles Away. Well, I think that that's, this is the, definitely the best place to do it. And Brent was saying to me that he reckons his eyes have really adjusted quite nicely to spotting at distance the other day. I don't think mine have. Um, I did that with the aid of some fairly good binoculars. Well, there seems to be another gathering of vehicles up ahead. I wonder what splendors await us there. Of course, the real reason I've come into this particular area is that this is the last time I saw Scarface. Let's head straight across to Ali at Chitwood Dam with a nice surprise.